What up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Funboxing with Will. I am your host, Will, with H2O Co. Film and Photo, and uh, today we're going to be talking about the Mavic Air 2. So let's get into that. Alrighty guys, and we're back. Now, uh, this isn't a review. I've already done my review on the Mavic Air 2. This is more a testament to the durability of the product and uh, just pretty much an incident that I had happen. I wanted to go over some things with everybody. Um, so before we get into it, I just wanted to say if you find any of this content useful or at all helpful, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button down below. Uh, I appreciate all of my viewers and uh, I just pretty much do overviews, tech reviews on just different products. Uh, I'm really into camera gear and uh, I'm a local content creator here in Gilbert, Arizona and a photographer. So I, I do a lot of reviews around technologies focusing around that kind of a thing, but I'll do a review on any tech that I can get my hands on. So I think my next tech review is coming up is going to be on a metal detector. So just, just different things that I have around here that I mess around with, just different hobbies I've had. But so today we're going to be talking about the Mavic Air 2. And I'm sorry, I keep looking over to my right hand side because that's where my Mavic Air 2 is sitting. And I am impressed with this guy. This is an incredible drone. Uh, I am I'm super impressed and now I understand why it is other than just the tech and what it can do so much more expensive than just a cheap Walmart drone. Um, first I want to preference this all by saying I am not by any means a pro with a drone. Uh, I think I've clocked around 460 something odd flights and then I have about 139 hours uh, behind the sticks which I mean it, it doesn't sound like a lot but it in actuality that's over a week solid of I think a week is 105 hours so that's over a week solid doing nothing no sleeping no eating no drink just standing there flying a drone all together you know of course it was spread out over time periods but so I, I and I'm not arrogant I don't think that I'm a good a great pilot you know I, I think I'm I mean mediocre I'm okay you know uh, and, but I did have a record that I really liked, and that was that up until last night, I had never crashed a drone. Uh, other than those Walmart drones, those cheap $50 drones that when you turn on, they just shoot around and go wherever. And uh, you really can't have that much control over a drone like that. But I picked up my first drone, I want to say April of the, this year, 2020, and I uh, it, it was the Mavic Mini, actually, DJI. And then I went ahead and upgraded to the DJI Mavic Air 2, and I've used it in some real estate photography. I've used it in just different things that I've used out here. Uh, photo jobs that I've done. I used it in a movie that I was making. Um, so they've been really amazing tools. And for a premium price, you'd expect them to be an amazing tool, especially with all of the features that they have, especially the Mavic Air 2 in particular. Uh, now, again, I said I've never crashed a drone. Well, last night, unfortunately, I ended up crashing my drone. Uh, I was board. It was 1.30 in the morning. I just got done doing some editing. So I had walked to the park across the street from my house down the road a little bit. And uh, it was a huge parking lot and it was empty. And uh, it's a contained parking lot in the back side of a, of a restaurant complex. So you can see people driving around for a distance. So it was a safe place to be flying in just the parking lot there. So I, uh, I let my, my drone go and I was focusing mainly on flying the drone without looking at it, which you're supposed to have visual line of sight all the time by law when you fly a drone, but that doesn't mean that you have to stare at it the entire time. You, that's what they build the monitors in there for, so you can look at the monitor and watch what the drone is actually doing. So as I said, I have plenty of experience with a drone, but I was trying to do something I probably shouldn't have, which is, this is not a first person fly racing drone. These these drones, I know some people will go out and buy a mini, Mavic Mini for 400 bucks and then they think it's this drone that they just go fly around and zip in, in and out of things and they don't even fly like first person view drones do. So um, like the, these drones don't invert, they don't do tricks, they don't do flips, they, they are specifically made for cinema and photography. They're made to record images in the best quality possible from an aerial viewpoint. And in the Mavic Air 2's case, it is meant to do 
much more than that where it has tracking modes and it has but but it is based around cinema it isn't based around racing it isn't based around any of that and so me being silly uh i decided to use it as a racing drone essentially and just not nothing crazy just go up and down in between the lanes of where the parking spaces were in this parking lot without actually looking at the drone i wanted to focus on just the drone itself uh, the remote controller so i did it a couple times and i had no issues i ended up taking it down from sports mode because 42 miles an hour was a little bit fast when the drone stop, it does have some leeway where it's still momentum is carrying it forward. So if you're going 42 miles an hour and you put on the brakes, just like with a car, it's going to take a second to stop. It's not going to stop dead in its tracks. So knowing that, uh, I was gauging distances and stuff, and I had no issues with that. It wasn't until I finished the, the situation and I went to go take off and get a little bit more elevation in the parking lot and then go, uh, I need glasses, my eyesight is horrid, and I'm looking at the controller, and I'm looking through the camera, and I'm looking at it in real time, and both cases, I did not see it until it was too late, but I flew the Mavic right into a tree, like directly into a limb full of leaves, and I believe it was a uh, mesquite tree out here in Arizona, which if anybody has ever been around a mesquite tree, they know that those are pretty hardwood trees. So, um, and it wasn't like a offshooting little tiny limb. I flew it directly into a main bush part of the tree. I don't know what you'd call that either. either even. But um, I actually did have it on record. Uh, I was recording when it happened. So I have the video for you here and I'm gonna go ahead and play that video for you there. So here you can see that I am just, you know, flying around the parking lot, you know, and I'm trying to judge my distance and I'm trying to judge uh, pretty much where I'm going to be stopping and going and, and everything, you know, and that's pretty much where that's at. And I'm just flying around, going through the parking lot. Now, right before I do, I do crash, you actually see me in frame. So once I get in the frame here, you'll see that I come up. And once I'm in frame, I come up and I pass over my shoulder, I head up towards the tree, and right into the tree I go. And I didn't see that until it was too late. So uh, it, was, it was quite embarrassing, even though nobody was around to see it. And now I'm sharing it with all of you guys. Uh, my very first crash was because I was dumb and flying at night. First off, I couldn't see my surroundings. Uh, and, and you know, I, I don't mind flying at night usually, but I have lights on my drone, and I also usually fly at an elevation over 200 feet with my drone, so I don't have the chance of running into power lines or anything like that in my local area. I know my area pretty well. I know where I normally fly. Uh, so at night, I'm not too concerned about it in general, but flying low to the ground uh, is definitely a concern when flying at night. You want to have the clearest vision possible, which is very difficult when you have bad eyes and it's nighttime. So I crashed into the drone or into the tree. Now I don't know if you noticed it, but in the video clip there, uh, there's a part where it stops finally. The, the drone stops getting tossed around and it recovers itself. And if you notice, it's still a good seven feet up eight feet up off the ground so it didn't actually i'd say it was about 12 feet maybe when it i'm not sure what that clip said the distance or elevation was but i was at least 12 feet up in the air i'd say and then when it fell it hit the tree it spun around a couple times flew out of the tree and then like recovered and just kept hovering and it didn't move around it didn't wobble or anything so uh i went over and i grabbed the drone real quick and i i looked at it over and it was dark outside and i i was didn't have a flashlight on me, so it was about a 10 minute walk. Like, I don't know, yeah, 10 minute walk away from my house. And so I decided to go ahead and start the drone and give it a test flight. Uh, I flew it back to the house and I didn't notice any problems. I flew it at a high elevation. Uh, I got home and then I shined some light on it. And as you can see in these photos I'm about to show you right here, so there is damage to the uh, sensor underneath the sensor right here, if you can see that right there. And then there's more damage to the propellers right here. You can see the propellers have the green mesquite tree stuck to them. And in the front of the, uh, the railing as well, or the front arms as well. 
So other than that though, uh, other than a little bit of scratches, and there was a few scratches on top of uh, the gimbal as well, I think. So other than uh, the few scratches and the scratches on the top of the gimbal, but nothing to the actual lens. Luckily I had an ND filter on at the time, so uh, even if it had been scratched, it would have scratched up the ND filter and not the camera lens itself. Um, that's why you always want to get ND filters for all of your lenses, whether they're on drones or not. But uh, so I was, I was generally just in awe because it was a, it was a good crash. So like it was, it was crazy because for me, I thought that I, you know, instant thought was, oh, you destroyed your, your drone. You, you know, you tear, you tear it up. And, uh, I, I, uh, I was actually really impressed with the cosmetic damage on it. There wasn't a lot of cosmetic damage, so durability-wise, these things are built like tanks from what I gather. Now, I've seen a lot of instances where they break and the gimbals break off of the drone, but um, now my big concern is, since I didn't break off my gimbal and there doesn't appear to be anything wrong with it, is there something wrong with the software, the internal software, like the IMA, uh, IMU, the compass, any internals, are those going to have issues? So now that I have to worry about the internals having issues, um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take you guys with me. I'm going to go across the street and do a test flight at the uh, clubhouse across the street and see if everything is working and operating correct. So uh, let's get out there. I'll take you out there real quick and we will test this thing and see how well it works. Alrighty, everybody. So um, <clears throat> I'm out here at the park across the street from my house. As you saw, uh, the physical damage to the drone was my primary concern. And then secondary, obviously, would be if I had messed up any kind of software uh, compass issues like that. Um, so this is the first time I've actually done a test flight with it since the crash last night so i'm gonna go ahead and take it up in the air um i'm gonna see just exactly if any damage was done to the imi or the imu the compass anything like that of that nature so uh, it appears to have started correctly no issues with that now the gimbal itself seems to be functioning correctly. Uh, from what I can tell, it doesn't look like the gimbal itself is having any issues. Um, let's see here. I'm able to scroll down and scroll up. Everything looks okay there. Uh, as you can see, it's hovering. I don't know if actually you can see that or not but it's hovering pretty stable, it looks like. Uh, and let's see here. So the ASB or a the, the bypass system, the sensors do seem to work still. Uh, I just tested the back sensor. I'm gonna test the front sensor now to see if, yeah, the sensors still seem to work. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and throw it into an active track mode here and then just do a spotlight and see. Yeah, that still seems to work fairly good. Um, so here's gonna be the real test. We're gonna take it up and we're gonna see how it maneuvers. And uh, yeah, we're gonna go from there, see how it maneuvers, um, see if I have any issues with it landing, uh, like I showed you guys earlier, the propellers took a beating. They've gotten a little bit of the scratches on them and stuff, but it didn't seem to chip the propellers at all or anything like that. So uh, that was really, really good for me. I was happy with that. Um, and again, this just goes to show the durability of these new drones is incredible. Um, I posted a story on a group on Facebook and I got some really, really awesome comments back. Uh, they were really helpful. Um, one of the guys said that he had crashed his drone into a building twice, and that was that was pretty crazy. He said that it still flies like a champ, other than he had to replace the gimbal. But uh, so far, so good. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, fly this around and see if I have any issues, but I doubt at this point that I'm going to have any issues with it, so. Again, just goes to show the durability of these things is incredible.
So as you can see, it's got pretty stable flight here. Uh, the controls are very responsive still. Uh, it looks like we're good to go. All right, so yeah, like I said, uh, I'm just shocked. This thing is built like a tank. It works great. There's pretty much no damage that I can notice. And after I took a, a wipe, like one of my kids' baby wipes to it and wiped down the arms and I wiped down the sensor, I wiped down everything, uh, you can't even tell that it's been any kind of, any kind of impact at all. Uh, there was a, I have a, um, what is this, PVC? based sticker, plastic sticker, to help with a little bit of moisture protection and it also just gives it a nice little decal look to it on there. And I did notice that the decal on the back of the battery I was operating it with that night did get scratched up a little bit. Other than that though, it appears to be in working order. So I am very, very excited. Uh, I will probably never do that again uh, in the middle of the night in a low altitude situation just because of what happened. I learned my lesson. Like I said, these are expensive drones and so they are intended for cinematic purposes mainly. They aren't, you know, racing drones. If you want a racing drone, buy a racing drone is my, well, my thought process works on that. But anyways, so yeah, that's pretty much all we got for you today, it was just a little uh, durability test. I guess it ended up being an unintentional durability test on how durable the DJI Mavic Air 2 is. And I am, needless to say, very impressed. I didn't even have to switch out the props on this thing. Uh, like I said, the props don't have any chipping to them. They don't have anything wrong with them at all. There was just a couple scratches on them here and there. So I am very very impressed with this and it is definitely a product that you would want to recommend to anybody out there who's doing any kind of filming or any situations like that so until next time guys i hope you stay safe have a great night and more than anything else stay creative my friends